it's a monster and maybe it's an unknown animal, kind of combines everything that I love. What I tell people is that I'm 90% convinced that Bigfoot exists based on 45 years of research. Ken Gerhard is a widely recognized cryptozoologist, an author and a lecturer. Ken has traveled the world searching for evidence of mysterious creatures including Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, the Chupacabra, the Mothman, and the Beast of Juvedon. In addition, he has written six books on the subject of unknown animals. His research has been featured on numerous TV shows including Missing in Alaska, Monster Quest, Ancient Aliens, America on Earth, The Unexplained, and Legend Hunters. Ken, thanks for sitting down with us. Well, thank you, Adam. Thanks yeah, for having me. Not a problem. So, um, we don't really know much about Bigfoot. So we came to this conference essentially to find out a little bit more about it um, than, you know, than, than, you know, learn from people that know more than we do. Mm -hmm. So I just want to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Ken, when did you start, when was your first belief in Bigfoot? When did that kind of pique your interest and when did you first start to believe in Bigfoot? Well, first of all, I'd like to clarify that um, belief is not a thing with me personally because I try to approach this from a scientific perspective. And in science, belief implies that you basically want something to be real. You know, it's more right. of an emotional attachment. So what I tell people is that I'm 90% convinced that Bigfoot exists based on 45 years of research all over the continent, working with all the leading investigators, interviewing hundreds of eyewitnesses. Uh, and I've never seen one with my own eyes, which is why I tell people I'm 90% convinced because that's a scientific way to look at it. There's always mm -hmm. a, a margin of error, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, you know, I'm fairly convinced that they do exist. Um, but I was about nine years old. I grew up loving monsters, monster movies. Uh, I had a lot of exotic pets as a, a kid, snakes and alligators and things. And so when I found out about Bigfoot, when I was about nine years old, I saw a TV show and it was just like something clicked inside mm -hmm. me. And I was like, well, it's a monster and maybe it's an unknown animal, kind of combines everything that I love. So I've just, I've been on the trail for 45 years now. It's awesome. And kind of playing off that, I mean, what do you think Bigfoot is? There's a little bit of, of speculation. Some say, you know, it's um, it's a it's a mammal or, or a monkey type creature. Some say it's kind of human. What it, what is your, um, I guess, how do you approach it, and what do you think that it, it possibly is? Yeah. So within the Bigfoot community, I'm what is known as an aper, okay, which basically means that I am, if Bigfoot exists, I think it's a hominin, which is a great ape, okay, and that it has it has Basically, it has a similar locomotor system to us, that is, it walks upright, primarily on its hind legs, which mm -hmm. makes it look very human. But as far as the physical characteristics that are described, covered in hair, ape-like features, receding forehead, sagittal crest, powerfully built, it's an ape. Hmm. And that's, that's my opinion. Okay. And, I mean, what would you say to some people that maybe necessarily are haters or naysayers about the, about the topic? I mean. What do, you, what do you kind of have to say to them? Well, first of all, uh, based on recent surveys, about 82% of the population does not think there's any chance that Bigfoot could exist. Right. So only 18% of people think that it's even possible that this thing does exist. So uh, we are in a minority. So I understand why people think that it you know, probably doesn't exist, even though everybody loves the idea of Bigfoot. Yeah. I mean, it's a cultural icon. We love it's it in commercials, right. movies. Yeah. Uh, those little cutout things that people put in their yeah. yard now. Um, so what I, what I can tell people is that if you really delve into the material and immerse yourself in the evidence, it's actually pretty compelling when you combine thousands of eyewitness accounts that are very consistent, Native American legends all over the continent that talk about a big, hairy, wild man, um, the Patterson-Gimlin film, which is really the only really convincing film footage we have, the footprint evidence, there have been hundreds of casts made of footprint impressions that are very consistent. Right. And things that look like Bigfoot actually did exist in the fossil record. They were yeah. called hominins and for two million years in Africa they were basically upright walking apes. They weren't as tall as Bigfoot, that's the only thing that doesn't really match up with the modern sightings of Bigfoot or Sasquatch. So if you consider all of that, it's actually, in my opinion at least, that's a pretty compelling body of evidence that they do exist. Yeah. One of the things I've heard a lot today um, is, a, is a couple of the speakers believe that it's 
primary to North America. Mm -hmm. Now, you do not believe that. Is that correct? I believe, I believe you're speaking how there's multiple cultures have different names for Bigfoot. It's, you know, they've seen it in China. They've seen it, well, you just said they've seen it in Africa. Yeah. So do you think it's kind of a, no, you it's all go, over the world? You can go worldwide and say that things like Bigfoot exist in Asia. We know them as the Yeti, yeah. the Yeren, the Almas, the Mande Barung, the Barmanu, the Goirung. In Australia, they're known as the Yawi or Yahoo. South America has the Ukumar and Mapinguari. I've investigated Bigfoot in Central America called the Sisamito. A lot of people don't know this, but there are sightings in Mexico and Central America. So Bigfoot doesn't stop at the border. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the sightings go all the way. So yeah, so that's another level of, you know, where do we get all of these worldwide legends yeah. from different cultures that are separated and disparate and they go back hundreds of years and even thousands of years. If you go to, to ancient Babylon, there was a poem called the Epic of Gilgamesh, where they right. talk about a big hairy wild man called Endiku yeah. that runs with the animals. So, yeah. you know, to me, that's that's yeah. it's intriguing, right? Yeah, it's very interesting. What now? There's also kind of a debate about the intelligence of Bigfoot. Obviously, mm. it's a highly intelligent creature, but some would believe that it has supernatural mm. or even uh, paranormal skills. What are you? What are your thoughts on that? Well, again, looking at it scientifically and really zoologically, because as a cryptozoologist, yeah. I look through the lens of zoology at all of these mysteries. Um, I'm a very open-minded person. I have friends that are involved in paranormal, supernatural research. I have friends that are UFO investigators. I find all of it fascinating mm -hmm. and possible. Yeah. But with regard to Bigfoot, my own personal experience has been through 45 years of research, interviewing hundreds of eyewitnesses, is that only about 3% of the evidence would indicate any kind of supernatural origin or I've never experienced any high strangeness like that. So in my own opinion, that is really the result of a sort of a sociological or cultural phenomenon with regard to Bigfoot. And um, not to be too verbose, but uh, there's a human thing called apophenia. It's a psychological condition that we all unconsciously demonstrate. And what apophenia is, is it's an unconscious need for us as humans to find meaningful connections between things that are sometimes unrelated. Yeah. And with regard to the supernatural and Bigfoot, they're both iconic mysteries yep. all over the world for centuries. And the way that our brains have evolved, some people find a, just this need to find that connection Connection's between Bigfoot and UFOs or Bigfoot and the supernatural. And, you know, many people are also very spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. And there's a sense of a confirmation bias with regard to Bigfoot because most of the people that I meet that think Bigfoot is supernatural are people that are already all in on the paranormal. Right. So they come from that background. That's what they're comfortable with. And they want to sort of connect that to their own right. sort of experience. Right. And then my last it's not really much of a question, but kind of just, you know, before we end, just explain kind of briefly what a cryptozoologist is. I don't feel like a lot of people are very familiar with that term. I know I myself am not. So just kind of, you know, briefly explain what, what that means. Yeah, absolutely. So um, cryptozoology is the study of hidden animals. That's the technical description. In Latin, crypto means hidden and zoology is the study of animals. Mm -hmm. So by hidden animals, we mean uh, animals that, uh, of which there are, is only anecdotal evidence, legends, eyewitness stories, but there's no hard physical evidence. We don't have bones. We don't have any physical remains or anything like that to study. But there is evidence that things like Bigfoot and also other things I've investigated like the Loch Ness Monster, Thunderbirds, so-called Black Panthers, there is a fairly convincing evidence that some of these may simply be remarkable, very rare, undiscovered animal species. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I approach all of these different mysteries. Well, awesome, Ken. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and, and tell us a little bit more. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Adam.